Welcome. Today we're talking about uh, multi-step equations with special cases. And by multi-step, I generally mean variables on both sides, but not always. And by special cases, special cases here is a word that means weird. We'll talk about what type of weirdness we're getting into in just a few, uh, just a couple seconds, I would imagine. Specifically, the types of questions that they mean when they say special cases here, uh, whatever book or group set you're working with, is there no solution questions or identities? Now, what does that mean? An identity. We're talking essentially about situations where, uh, when we plug in numbers for the variable, so uh, a variable statement, 4x plus 5 equals 7. What we're saying is there's some value for x we can plug in to make both sides of these things true, so we can make a truth statement. And you can figure that out by solving the equation to find out that it's 1 half. In this situation, the one thing I can plug in for x that makes it true is 1 half, because 4 times 1 half would be 2, and 2 plus 5 is 7. That makes a truth statement. So we want one side to equal the other. Now, in the special cases, we have situations where either, no matter what you plug in for the variable, you get a truth statement. And then, on the other side, uh, no matter what you plug in, it's never going to lead to a truth statement. Anytime we can plug in anything and it's true, we're going to refer to this in an equation sense as an identity. You may also see it, which basically means one side equals the other, by the way. You may also uh, see it called all real numbers and some other things. But in the equation sense, it's an identity because one side is equal to the other. Now, there are situations where we can plug in the v anything into the variable we want, any real number. And you come up with situations where nothing works. So no matter what, negative 3 is not going to equal 7. So if we plug in uh, variable terms, if it's x minus 3 and x plus 7, no matter what you plug in for x, be it 0 or a million, it's still not going to lead to a truth statement. So one can't equal the other. In that case, we look at no solution. So it just means that no matter what we plug in, it either works every single time or it never works at all. That's why they're called special cases, where in most cases like this one, only one or two possible answers are true. So uh, that's what we're looking at today. Now, how do you determine whether or not it's a special case? In general, in the, in the early stages here, we're just going to look for two basic things. Number one, we're going to look for an equation that eliminates the variable term completely. So if I had 3x on one side, and 3x on the other. I'm going to have to eliminate 3x, so to get rid of plus 3x, I'm going to subtract 3x. Sorry, I'm stepping over my words a little bit. See how these cancel out on both sides? Well, that eliminates the variable term. So what we're going to look at that what's left over is really what matters. Once we determine that the variable term has been eliminated, we're going to look to see if the final statement is a truth or a lie. If it's a truth statement, we're going to say that it's all real numbers. Because without the variable terms being involved at all, or all real numbers, or I should say, in better terms for this lesson, identity versus the idea of what happens if none of them work, no matter what, it's a lie statement. So in one that I looked at earlier, negative 3 equals 7, well, that's a lie, right? So if that's the case, then it's no solution. In order to maintain my green-purple integrity, I'm going to color this one green. By the way, it means absolutely nothing. The color choice is I keep my uh, markers in a rubber band, and they just happen to be next to each other. I'm not trying to make some statement or anything. Um, so let's look at a couple. These are two problems, and I may have to get a book here real fast from across the room and raise the camera up so that you can see both questions at the same time. I have no idea why I felt like I needed to do this, but or put two questions on the same piece of paper at the same time. So I'm just going to raise up the camera a little bit. You can see one of the algebra books we're using now. I'm going to try to organize this in a nice fashion. There we go. Now you can see the whole thing. Sorry about the delay. So I'm going to solve both of them, and we'll see uh, what that really looks like, the idea of no solution versus an identity. In order to solve the equation, if you haven't been following along before, the first step we're going to do is draw the line. So I'm going to draw the line down the equal sign. And by the way, I'm just, I could draw a line here in the middle, and they're separate problems. They're not, this is not related to this. Um, 
The next step I would look for is uh, what we call babies go ba goes bathroom or uh, distributed property. So I would do two times six is twelve x, and two times negative two is minus four. I'm going to bring all this down. And then I'd look for my clean room situation, and they are. Then we're going to do what we call pork chops and applesauce, which is where we get all the variable terms on one side. Now, you could move the four first, or you could move the x term first. So it's a good idea in this situation to move the variable terms first, just because it makes it easier to see that this is a special case. So I'm going to get rid of plus 12x, because remember, this sign has nothing to do with this, by subtracting 12x from both sides. These eliminate, and these eliminate. So we've met one of the criteria Elimination of variable terms. Now we're just going to see if it's true or it's a lie. This statement says 4 is, or negative 4 is equal to negative 4. Well, that's true, right? So if I have a truth statement, it's the truth. This is an identity. By the way, it might be a little weird if you wrote truth on your paper because that would freak people out. So just write identity so you're more mathematically accurate, I guess. So on the other side, so we limited variables. Same thing, that's true. Identity. So let's try another one. Draw a line. There's no uh, distributed property here, so I combine like terms. Negative 4 plus 13x. We give you 9x. So I'm left with this. Now I'm going to see if I can um, move over that plus 9x. So I'm going to subtract 9x. Those cancel. Those cancel. So I'm left with 6 is equal to negative 3. Well, obviously, that statement is a lie. And if it is a lie, we're going to write as our answer, no solution. So basically, you're following the same rules that you've been following if you've been going through the methods that we've been doing, and then eliminating the variable term, and then trying to figure it out. I have a note on my hand in case you noticed that. I forgot it was there. Good thing I made the video, huh? So let's do a couple of sample problems. Now the sample problems are really amped up from some of the ones we've been doing. I tried to make them a little bit more complicated just to show you the longer ones. And really, they're not that hard. Just follow the same method we'd always been doing. Uh, so draw the line. Now I'll do uh, distributed property. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 6k is negative 12k. Bring down 7k. We don't need this. I'll bring this down. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16k. Negative 2 times 1 is minus 2. Now I'm just going to combine like terms. On this side, it's this one and this one. So 7 minus 12 is negative 5k minus 2. Negative 1 minus, 17, or minus 16 is negative 17k minus 2. Now I'm going to move the variable term over. To get rid of minus 17k, I'm going to add 17k. And then to get rid of, so I'm just, this is the part he's over stage. I need to move 2 over, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And you may think to yourself, well, this one didn't eliminate a variable term. This eliminates negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So I divide by 12, and my answer is 0. Well, why would I give you that one in a question about special cases? Because it's really easy to think that this is a special case. We eliminated not the variable term. The variable term's fine. We ended up eliminating the uh, constant term, or the integer term, or the number term, whatever you want to call it. We got rid of minus 2 by adding 2, and we got to 0. So write your 0 down. Do not fear the idea that k could be 0, or any variable could be 0. In this case of this problem, the only time I can make a truth statement is if I plug in a 0 for k. So just know that your answers can be 0. So don't always assume that anytime you eliminate something, it's going to be uh, identity or no solution, because sometimes you're eliminating the constant term. And that's OK to do. You can still get 0 as an answer. Don't be afraid. It's only when you eliminate the variable term. And let's look at this one. This one might give us a different result. Draw the line. Do the distributive property. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4p. 
Negative 4 times negative 8 is plus 32. Negative 7 times 1 is negative 7. And remember, if you don't see a 1 there, you can always put a 1 if it helps your brain. Negative 7 times 6 is negative 42. Bring all this down. Now I need my to combine my like terms, and I've got uh, some sets in there. It's some like shirts and skins a little bit this time, isn't it? Here's the shirts team because they both have variables, and these are the skins team. They're united by their lack of variable. Negative 4 uh, and minus 7 is negative 11p. Uh, 32 minus 42 is negative 10. Bring this down on this side. By the way, the more you write down, the easier these are. So write down a little bit. Uh, now I need to eliminate minus 11p. So I'm going to add 11p to both sides. This cancels because negative 11 plus 11 is 0. This does as well. Negative 11 plus 11 equals 0, which means these variable terms cancel out. Warning, warning, this is eliminating a variable term. So I'm going to look to see if this is a true statement or a lie. In this case, negative 8 is not equal to negative 10, so this is a lie, which means for my answer, I'm going to put that this is no solution. Because lies are never the solution, I guess. I don't know why I wrote solutions. There's no solution. No matter what I plug in for P up here, no matter what real number I plug in, it's still not going to give me an answer that works, so I have to be careful. So I think I have one more. And then in order for balance, I'm, you can probably guess this is going to be an uh, identity, but, you know, just in case. Follow the rules. Let's draw the line. And if you're watching this on the YouTube and you don't know the sequence, then watch the videos ahead of it, and you may you'll see the draw the line and all that baby goes bathroom craziness. So the next step would be uh, the ba the baby goes bathroom or the BGB. Negative four times four is negative sixteen k. Negative four times negative eight is negative thirty two. Uh, bring down plus six. I will state what I've stated in class a few times is that a lot of algebra problems have nothing to do with your ability to do math. They have to do with your handwriting. So make things look nice and big. Um, keep things in a nice orderly line. Write things down. Make sure you write the signs and the variables if they're there. It'll make your life 10 times easier. Uh, trust me, I had to work on my handwriting before I became a, a teacher. So it is one of those things. So let's move. Uh, let's do the clean your room step. I'm going to clean this up. So negative 32 plus 6 gives you negative 26. Now, the sharp mind will see that this side is the same as this side. Negative 16k minus 26 equals negative 16k minus 26. If you're alert when you're doing it and you don't get in like this little algebra trance, you'll see that this is already the same. When they're the same, it means it's an identity because this side already equals this side. They look exactly alike. But in order to continue it on so we can see that elimination of variable, let's get rid of minus 16k. And this says negative 26 is equal to negative 26, which I totally believe to be the truth. So this is a truth statement. So I. Uh, I'm going to put on my paper that this is an identity. And I say that, that's what I'm going to write on my paper, I put that there just as a reference. Um, I say that because no matter what I plug in for k, so if I plugged in a million for k, it would be negative 16 million here and negative 16 million here, and those would eventually cancel each other out. And then I'd still be left with minus 26 equals my, uh, negative 26 is equal to negative 26. So they're the same thing. So that's how you set up special cases, and I hope that uh, this is helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, or, I mean, if we're in class, just ask them. So good luck.